everyone, and welcome to this uh, SWE Europe Inspiration Session. My name is uh, Carlos Helbling, and I will be your host and moderator today. Um, I am a SWE member. I am uh, currently the main contact and creator of uh, the Spain Valencia affiliate, and I'm, uh, I am also the sponsor of uh, the Brazil Porto Alegre metropolitan area for almost five years. So I have been a long time with uh, ISWI. Uh, ISWI is actually my passion, and that's the reason why I am here today uh, to share uh, not only my passion, but uh, help out with uh, this uh, session. Now, ERGs uh, vary across companies and sectors and across countries and regions. So I am delighted to welcome my fellow speakers Audrey David, Site Capital Lead at Takeda in Belgium, and Kimberly Delemac, Tech Ops Project Management and Cybersecurity Engineer at Cummins in the UK. To learn more about our backgrounds, you can refer to the link in the chat. As we go through the conversation, feel free to share your questions for us, as well as comments, experiences, and ideas in the chat. After the presentation, we will have a live Q&A to address your questions and remarks. And then we will move to breakout rooms so you can exchange ideas with one another. So let's get started on our panel conversation. Um, well, Audrey, Kimberly, the three of us work in different companies in very different industries. Let's start with a quick summary of each person's experience with ERGs. Um, Kimberly, let's go to you first. Sure, thank you so much, Carlos. Um, for me, I work at Cummins, and at Cummins, uh, employee resource groups are very much encouraged within the teams that you work. I have had an amazing experience working with great people. I've gained a lot of mentors through ERG groups. I have networked a whole lot. Also, I've been able to do a Six Sigma project based on the ERG groups that I was a part of. I am able to grow personally, professionally, based on everything that I've learned with the people that I work with in the ERG groups. And to me, it also gives you the opportunity to learn about different cultures because you meet a lot of different people in these employee resource groups from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different ethnicities. You learn about new food, or about new music, new languages. So for me, um, employee resource groups should be encouraged uh, in every organization because there's a lot of benefits from these, these groups. Thanks, Carlos. Audrey, your time. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Audrey David. I'm a mechanical engineer working in pharmaceutical industry since uh, 12 years now. Uh, I had position in quality technical services, so mainly in maintenance calibration teams. And uh, now I'm in charge of a capital project within Takeda. And regarding my ERG experience, so ERG is a voluntary um, uh, initiative that is formally supported by an organization. Uh, these groups um, provide support and help uh, in personal and career development and to create also safe space uh, for employees to, to grow and to be able to uh, to share their concern uh, and have a positive impact on the, on the business. So I think it's very important. And also allies uh, may be uh, invited to join this ERG to support uh, colleagues and also to bring perspective. That, uh, that's what I, I find also uh, very interesting. And so for my part, I uh, participated in several uh, gender parity and disability ERG for the last uh, three years. And uh, I've learned so much about um, interesting topics, difficulties encountered by certain people and uh, how we could become more inclusive as a company. And um, so ERGs are a really good way uh, to, to debate, um, to put important topics on the table for employees and to seek pragmatic solutions uh, together. Um, and from my experience with gender parity, ERG in particular, I've learned uh, so much about uh, for example, biases that we could face, um, but in particular also biases that women could have about themselves, and I found that very interesting. And on this, um, as a network, the coaching, the mentoring uh, from an ERG is very important. 
Okay, well, Audrey, Kimberly, thanks a lot for your, your comments here. I personally had also some experience with ERGs. Um, the ones that I would like to highlight here is uh, basically two of them. Uh, the first one, I remember that was uh, about six years ago, a member of uh, an ERG that was focused on uh, relationship with universities, which would be kind of a generational ERG, perhaps. And for me, it was really nice because I have uh, also passion uh, on the university side. And so having this connection with the university was really, really nice. That prepared also my uh, my work with Fisui as well, uh, because uh, what happened is that um, when I when I started to, to be closer to Fisui, everything that I was doing in the universities was on the engineering universities. And of course, when I was there in the engineering universities and seeing that we have much more males than females on the speeches, we can start to see some of the challenges that we have on, on this week. So I, I think that this uh, uh, this experience that I had with uh, this uh, ERG helped me out also with uh, the following work that uh, I was uh, handling with uh, the ESWI the ERG as well. Great. So we we have started talking about uh, our experiences. So I will start the panel talking exactly about that. So uh, basically, all those experiences has helped us to identify where there are misconceptions or bias. Uh, and how might ERGs help us to actually overcome these misconceptions and bias? Perhaps, Audrey, do you want to start with that? Um. Yes, about misconception. So, of course, uh, as you say, we, we, we see more and more women in technical function, but it's uh, uh, it, it still uh, can be improved. Uh, we can see through different studies that uh, there are still difference in female representation uh, in technical fields uh, or even corporate executive boards. Uh, things are progressing, but there are still uh, gaps to fill depending on companies, of course, and region of the, of the world. So... Um, we should definitely co uh, continue to communicate about everything that uh, diversity brings within organization in terms of uh, management style, communication, execution. Uh, we should definitely mirror the, so the society, the world we live in uh, to allow us to, to generate uh, sustainable progress uh, and build at the end a more balanced and uh, sustainable world. Um, so how ERG can help um, as a NIRG goal is to serve as resource for employee, uh, it's also a forum to, to discuss, to debate, uh, to create uh, solutions. Um, so the intent is not to, to replace, to duplicate uh, the roles of HR and manager, but it could uh, definitely help. Um, and um, and yes, yeah, so there is still a misconception to, um, to address. Absolutely. Kimberly, your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts on that, um, I agree with what you said, Audrey, 100%. And uh, without being an ERG group, sometimes you might feel like really and truly there aren't that many women in the STEM fields. But sometimes when you do join these ERG groups, you see a lot of women in um, programming, a lot of women in um, engineering, a lot of women who are uh, in architectural design. You see these women very confident, very bold, very brave woman. So it's it's a it's a mixture, right? So I feel like if you do want to have a different view, if you do want to have a different perspectives, you should join these groups. So you get to see all these things that are probably just missed because we are out there and we are working with men. Whether you're a man, a woman, you're non-binary, they're out there. And um, I think it would be beneficial to understand that a lot of these things are just misconceptions, as you rightly said, Carlos. Absolutely, Kimberly. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. I, I will go to the next one uh, that uh, talks about stakeholders. So how do we identify and engage the right internal stakeholders for the maximum success? Kimberly, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure, Carlos, I would. And I've had a direct experience with that, with um, a project that I led, I think that was last year. And I, I had to have men and women involved in that project as my stakeholders. 
and even the the black belt for that project when uh, she looked at the list of stakeholders that were supporting the project we had more men on the list as opposed to female and we actually went out to look for more female stakeholders to add to that project because you need to have it balanced because the ideas that you might get from a man is different from the ideas you might get from a woman. The way a man might drive a project would be different from the way a woman might drive a project. And you need that diverse group. You need those diverse ideas in order to have a successful project. So it is important to ensure you have um, both men and women as stakeholders on um, your projects. When you're working, it is important. Oh, and we Audrey, do you? Uh, I think you want to to also bring some some ideas as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so also, uh, yes. Um, I think that anyone, of course, is the right stakeholders to, uh, to become mm -hmm. a, an ally. Um, this come this this come from the top management also in order to shine on the organization, of course. And so, as uh, you just said, having allies uh, from uh, different uh, groups. Um, within the RG will bring many different perspectives and will have an even greater impact on the organization. Uh, so from my point of view, one of the risks to be avoided at all costs is to uh, create uh, stigmatizing groups uh, which would make us uh, feel not concerned uh, or that they have nothing to contribute. We should uh, be careful to not have a divisive uh, communication. Uh, to have a positive impact within an organization, uh, the RG must be fully understood, accepted, supported uh, by everyone within the organization. And uh, and so the RG must be themselves uh, inclusive, definitely. I think that uh, we can um, also talk about, uh, let's say, getting the right stakeholders. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, part of getting the right stakeholders means uh, winning over skeptics and engaging male allies. Uh, Audrey, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, to win over skeptics, simply from my point of view, just be, just be a doer, do, be an achiever, be ambitious, uh, be a professional to... Uh, uh, who learn? Uh, I think this is the best way to to demonstrate, uh, to take to to dare to take on challenges, to to create your network, uh, your opportunities. Uh, make sure that your ambition and, and your your development and career uh, objective are known, and and then you will find the right people to support you and to to help you uh, uh, to grow. So don't don't put up your own barriers. It's in your hands, and uh, it's in your hand to to demonstrate uh, uh, what what you need to to win over skeptics. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, sometimes, Audrey, you know, the, the, the barriers are could be very simple. Like um, one example that came to, to my mind, uh, I remember that uh, when I was uh, invited to be the sponsor of this uh, Brazil affiliate in Porto Alegre metropolitan area, um, it was a couple of weeks uh, later that uh, uh, we were doing a strategic planning. And I remember that uh, I get into the room. I was the only male inside of the room. There was uh, around like, 20 persons there. Uh, all of them were either engineers or engineering students, uh, half and half, more or less, all female. And um, the first thing I look at, at uh, all the ladies and say, hey, why we do not have men here? Why am I the only one here? And the second question I did is, why we only have engineers here? Because at the end of the day, Society of Women Engineers talk about STEAM, right? And uh, when I start to do these questions, the, the answers that I was getting from them is, well, but this society of women engineers, so therefore we are women engineers on this ERG. And then we start to say, hey, but let's be more diverse. So let's bring more people, people that want to help, that people that can bring diverse uh, standpoints on let, the conversation. Let that can be included. That's right, Ollie. that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Kimberly, any, do you want yeah. to add? Um, yes, so with the organization, with the name, some people might really feel like only women are allowed in this group or only engineers are allowed in this group, but we're advocating for like those who might not be the majority, right? And we do need the support, whether it's from men, whether it's from people in finance, whether it's from people in art, the art industry. We do need these people to support us. 
And again, when they see the motivation, when they see the accomplishments, when they, they see the bravery, right? You get these people to come on board and support the movement. And I think it's important, again, when you're in these ERG groups to let others know that they are welcomed. It's not exclusive to only women engineers. You are welcome. It's just that we're trying to speak up for ourselves. We're trying to have a, 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 a spotlight in the room and we do need your support. So yeah. that's how I, that, that, that's my opinion on that point, Carlos. Yeah, no, that, absolutely. That's a great point because uh, at the end of the day, the name of the ERG or, or the goal is on the spotlight. But uh, at the same time, we at the end of the day, we are working on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yes. So we want to include the diverse people to help yes. us out on, we do. On, on achieve this goal. Yeah. So, yeah, and we need to change, defer both things. That that's, yeah. I think that was the point. Uh -huh. uh, and educate before. educate people about that too. We need to let them know it's okay. You can join. Come join us. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, hey, uh, I will change a little bit to the topics right now. So, uh, my question to you is, uh, how do we know whether we are successful or not inside an ERG? Uh, so how do you think we should monitor performance, uh, and, uh, how do we create meaningful KPIs? So how do we, let's start with you on that. So yes, about, about metrics. So ERG metrics are. It would be any quantifi quantifiable data you can gather to analyze um, as part of a, of an ERG. Um, you you could have different KPIs. You could have KPIs related to ERG operation itself, such as ERG participation, satisfaction, uh, retention rate, also. Um, and you you have different metrics. So the KPIs uh, that help you to know what to address and and where you start. Uh, for example, KPI um, of women representation within an engineering organization, uh, an analyze of the distribution within the management, um, an analyze also uh, that shows differences between a region of the world. So um, KPI could be important, is, is important uh, to uh, know where to start from and to measure progress, um, but they have to be um, really simple, really clear, well-defined, uh, they must be the right one, the most relevant one, and uh, and we should not only focus on that. Uh, at the end, of course, it could help to start, but we we should not only focus on on KPIs uh, because our ERG are also about uh, cultural uh, changes, inclusivity, and and again mirroring the, the world we live in and employee caring. So we we should have KPIs, but again, uh, something simple, uh, clear, and and very well uh, uh, quantifiable. Yeah, yeah, and perhaps uh, when uh, when I was uh, uh, phrasing here the question, the, the the adjective meaningful, right? The the meaningful is also really really important. As as you were mentioning, hey, it must be simple. It must be simple. It must be meaningful, and, oh, and so. And yeah. Not only focus on that at the end, or you would miss uh, because it, this is about employee caring and uh, and well being of everyone, and 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 let everyone feel. Uh, uh, comfortable within the company and feel that they, they are empowered and, and they could go within the organization. So, um, yeah, not only me. Okay. Yeah. Kimberly, go ahead. Uh, I believe that before you could even start monitoring your successes, um, the performance, you need to create that safe space for your employees. Because if you don't create that safe space, what are you really monitoring? Because people don't feel like they're welcome. People don't feel like they could speak up in a meeting. Um, I've been in teams where um, the female leader ensures that she calls out on other female employees to make sure that their voices are heard. But sometimes you're in a room, and again, we're in a male-dominated field. We have a whole lot of women in engineering, in STEM, agreed. But I've been in a lot of Zoom meetings when I'm the only woman in that Zoom meeting. Right. But there are a lot of times when I don't even feel that way because that safe space has already been created. My voice is heard. I share my opinions. I give feedback. And that's just how we we smoothly flow through the meetings. So as a leader, as a great leader, I think it's important that you continuously 
ensure that everybody's voices are heard when you're in a meeting. It is important because you might find, let's say, five five people, let's say five women, right? They're, they're not speaking in the meeting and you have 10 men. They're the, the main ones speaking. And it's not that these five women, they don't have much to add. It's not they don't have anything to contribute, but have you created the safe space where we feel that we could step forward and share what's on our mind? So um, monitoring that performance, I think it's important. Yes, and how do we do that? Ensure that you pick out when you see someone is like not very vocal, call them out and allow them to share their opinion on whatever topic it is. But first you need to create that safe space. Yes, yes. And uh, you, you brought uh, one, one one point here, Kimberly, that uh, it's it's very soft to, to get that, right? So how, how you how you would uh, uh, calculate or measure um, your, your uh, safe a safe zone? So mm -hmm. and, uh, and and but at the same time, it's very very important. So uh, it seems that uh, it, it talks about uh, preparing the leaders or preparing the persons that are participating. Something like that. What do you think, Kimberly? Yes, yes, I do feel so. Um, preparing the leaders because in order for them to even lead that team, they need to have gotten that training elsewhere. Right. So I think it's important to start pouring the resources into our leaders so it could trickle down into our everyday teams. I believe so. Okay. Great. Um, Audrey, I will come back to you uh, when we were, let's say, when you were talking about uh, KPIs. Um, what What is your opinion about uh, the quota driven? So, which is normally, well, sometimes use it on the RG. So, yes. Um... I think it will depend on the organization and the region of the of the world. Of course, there are um, several opinions regarding the quotas. Um, probably in in some organization, if uh, in the field we we don't find any woman, uh, maybe it should start with, uh, with with something that could help. But at the end, we should we should leave it because um, if I sp speaking for myself, I don't want to be chosen because I'm a woman uh, to fill a quota well, definitely. So I want to be chosen because I'm a professional and I want to grow uh, um, and, and, and that's it. I don't want to feel a quota myself. Yeah, that is that is a very, very sensitive uh, situation because at the end of the day, if the organization is uh, saying that, hey, we need to achieve a certain quota, uh, some people see uh, some promotions and will think, oh, mm -hmm. they are doing that because of the quota and not because, let's say, the mm -hmm. persons deserve which is exactly what, uh, what is really, really happening. So it's very, very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Kimberly, you want to bring something? Uh, yeah, I was saying like traditionally, and the reason, I, I believe the reason why we even have these quotas in place these days is because traditionally we had up, like areas where men were chosen over women, regardless of the qualifications. So in history, these things were happening, right? Where we did have that imbalance. So these things right now are put in place to ensure that everyone gets a fair, a fair chance, a fair opportunity. So the same amount of qualified men we could have doing the job, there are qualified women who could do the same job. And we have these things actively enforced now because it wasn't that way back then. So I, I get what you're saying, Audrey, I do. You want to be chosen for, for your skills and not just because you're a woman. You get it. But years ago, another woman couldn't have said that. So um, that's my take on that point, Carlos. Well, oh, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot on, on that. Uh, I am, by the way, I'm seeing that we are starting to have a, a lot of uh, questions in, in, the, in the chat here. Very soon we are uh, getting there. Um, well, before we move to the q and I have uh, a last topic to, to talk to you both. Uh, well, uh, we also know that uh, what you do is one thing, uh, but even it's a great thing. People have to know about it. And getting attention these days can be really, really difficult with the amount of information that uh, we, we are receiving every day. So how do you think we should uh, communicate about uh, activities and achievements and 
what is the role ERGs can play in those uh, communications? What's to start on that? Let's start with LinkedIn. <laughs> That's a great um, platform, professional platform where we could share our successes, our accomplishments by um, that platform. We have newsletters, we have the actual SWE website and other ERGs have their website as well. If you are interested, genuinely interested, you go, you see what's the latest updates there, you see what's the news on that ERG. That's one way we could um, communicate our successes. And by word of mouth, if you know you're doing a great job, people know your ERG, they talk about it. But have you heard Sui is doing this in the news lately? They talk about it. And um, when we have these um, forums, that's another way to share our challenges, uh, to share the great things that we're doing. And we have others who register for these meetings to learn more about what we do, to see how we could share ideas that might motivate them. And uh, these are just a few ways where we could communicate what we're doing. And I'm sure, Audrey, you probably have other ideas as to how we could communicate that. Oh, yes, sure, you're right. And, and ERG could, uh, could help also to communicate. And depending on the organization, we have internal communication also. <clears throat> so, sorry. I, I, I think that uh, we should definitely communicate and celebrate successes in general. And um, and we should uh, communicate uh, successes that also can, can demonstrate uh, diversity as a strength. Um, and, um, and yes, uh, ERG encourage women to be more active uh, advocates and, and should help for this communication. Uh, and again, keep things simple, focus, pragmatic, and and communicate communicate well about uh, what the diversity brought to the success, and uh, communicate well what 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 you do, uh, why, and and what is the impact. Um, what question for you both? So, Kimberly, I know that you talking about uh, LinkedIn. So, uh, do you want to share experience that you have uh, on other platforms or other ways to communicate? Well, my question is to both of you, okay? <laughs> I know that we do have, on Instagram, we do have um, SWE there as well. And we do communicate what goes on within the um, the employee resource group through there as well. Facebook. We have Facebook as well. SWE. These are other ways. You could, you could add us on these different platforms. So you're always... Uh, in the new, you know what is the latest updates because not everyone who uses LinkedIn agree on that one. Um, but if you might use Instagram, we're on Instagram. If you might use Facebook, we're on Facebook as well. And uh, just feel free to reach out to whoever these contact people are and ask probably how can you get involved? How can you support? How can you learn more? Yeah. I said in some organization, we, we find quite um, uh, often uh, some uh, some platform such as Yammer uh, also to communicate internally. Very good. Very good. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, basically, we were able to, to cover pretty much uh, the, 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 the panel content for today. So many thanks, Audrey and Kimberly, for sharing your insights and experience. Uh, as I was mentioning before, I was already seeing uh, several questions coming in the chat. Uh, so I would like to address uh, those uh, now. I will start uh, with one question from Nadine. Uh, so her question was, uh, don't the quotas help curb bias in those uh, choosing roles? So when, who wants to pick that? I think as, as Kimberly also just said, um... We can have a different opinion on it because I think it will depend on the organization in the region of the world. I say if we find some, somewhere uh, in some areas that we don't have any women uh, since a long time, maybe there is something to, to put in place to start the change, to start a cultural change. Um, and at the end, uh, it, maybe a few years after, we could leave the quota. So maybe in some organization it would be uh, it would be helpful, um, but not not everywhere. And uh, to add to that, what you just said, Audrey, maybe a few years from now, we'll leave the quota, meaning that it should become a norm that whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, non-binary, whatever you are, 
once you're qualified, you get that job. So I understand where you're coming with that part. And to Nadine's question, yes, these things are put in place to curb those biases because these biases have been there for years. They've been there. So, yes, that's why they are put in place, Nadine. And not only regarding the gender parity, you can find some different ERG with, uh, with other topics and yeah. these are the same. Well, Nadine, I, I hope you are uh, happy with this uh, answer. I will move to the next one. So Heartbreed um, has uh, has made the following. Uh, what can women do to be more courageous and influential? I, I feel like we need to be comfortable. I feel the first thing we need to do is be comfortable. Um, ensure that you're in a space where you could be vocal. Like, ensure that you're in a space where you could be expressive. Ensure you're in a space where you could be yourself and the people that you work with, they accept you and they motivate you to be better, right? So first, ensure that you're in that space and then just be you. You're bold, you're brave, you're amazing, just be you. And it will show. And that's how people sense that energy and they come and they support. So I feel like um, that's one way you could be more courageous. Another way you could be more courageous would be probably getting certain exposure to maybe different topics. That could be one way where you could be more courageous because now you have more knowledge, now you're more educated on certain things, so you feel more comfortable to talk on them. It's another way you could be more courageous. Another way could be having the right mentors to pour that wealth of knowledge, that support, right? That encouragement. So that could be another way where you could become more courageous if you are um, meet with that mentor one-on-one -on -one quite often, help you build that confidence. That's one way. Um, Audrey, do you want to add? Yes, I totally agree with it. And I, I, I think... Um, um... Make, make make your goals known um and um just yes if if you have if you have goals just 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 go for for them and create your network and again the article could help for that because you will find a lot of people uh, who could share the experience they could uh, of course be a mentor uh, a coach so don't hesitate to to build your network uh and and to benefit uh from other experiences uh, that could uh, inspire you also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and contribute, like step forward and participate in different um, events, different programs that could help you be more confident as well. When you put yourself out there, you find something that ERG is doing that interests you, step forward and contribute to that. And that could help you be more courageous. Thanks, and I and I, um, I I would take the opportunity to to also build on 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 this uh, last comment, Audrey. I uh, I, I would say that uh, usually the the way that people get development is the well the traditional education, and then later on you can get coaching, mentoring, okay. but uh, sponsoring is also uh, uh, something that uh, came uh, to 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 uh, let's say to everybody's ears in the last years. And a sponsor is talk, a sponsoring talk about uh, somebody that really, really cares about you. That is not only mentoring or coaching, but somebody that says, hey, this one is really, really a great person. This one mm -hmm. can do a lot of stuff. And uh, at, the, at the end of the day, this was something that uh, was happening for many years, but it was kind of hidden. And so having a sponsoring uh, doesn't matter female or male, but having somebody that is your sponsor or perhaps two or three persons uh, working out with the networking, that helps a lot. That uh, helps a lot to be more courageous. And so that would be my uh, also my, my comment here. Yes, well. you will have to, to feel empowered by uh, your management or sponsor, as you said, so it will also um, bring you confidence to move forward. And and again, don't put uh, don't put on, on your own barriers. If you have goals, just go for it and create your path. Yeah, I agree. Hey, we have one more question here from Vanessa. Um, ERGs are mainly powered by the amazing efforts of employees. Uh, how best can companies help support these employees who are willing to volunteer their time to be an advocate 
to show them that their efforts are valued. No, so uh, organizations uh, could uh, communicate about uh, what what ERG are doing, um, and also they could support um, people who are attending to some initiative by uh, giving them the time to do it, because of course it requires uh, sometimes a uh, uh, certain percentage of, uh, of 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 the load depending on on the, on your role within the ERG. Um, so we could uh, we could be supported by our manager uh, through it also. Yes, Audrey, and to add to that, recognition. You could have uh, members in the leadership team at that organization reach out directly to that employee and probably to the employee's manager to thank them for their contribution in whatever event they, they participate in. It. So that's one way. Another way could be, um, again, your own certifications. Because as I said earlier, for my Six Sigma certification, which is widely recognized, one of the projects was from that ERG group. So pouring these resources into your employees, into the members of that group, that's one way to um, keep them going, keep them motivated and recognize them. Um, another way could be compensation. Some people do have compensations based on how involved they are. That's something else. Um, you could be, you could even have a promotion Let's say if uh, the people in that ERG recognize your skills, right, what you're really, really, really good at, then they might offer you a certain position aligned to where your strengths are. So that's another way as well. Great. Uh, hey, we got uh, another question here from Daniela. How do you get HR endorsement for initiatives such as mentoring? It's, it's not it's not always linked uh, actually and, and as as said also ERGs or mentors are not uh, there to replace HR role uh, neither uh, no manager role um, so uh, I don't think that there is a uh, always a link uh, between uh, between these two so we could we could recognize uh, a mentoring uh, that, that we have uh, through HR and, and managers we could uh, let them aware of it of course. But uh, it's not necessarily, uh, from my point of view, a human, re a human resource uh, topic. Uh, doesn't have to come from them. Agreed, it doesn't have to. Um, but whichever source it's coming from, again, you you promote yourself. You promote your ERG. What is it that you're doing? You know what the objective is. You communicate that clearly know what you're trying to reach, you know what the mission, what the vision is for that ERG, and then you sell it. And then you find different groups willing to support it and sponsor it. So it doesn't have to be an HR, but you have different groups supporting it based on how well you present and promote your ERG. Uh, well, thank you again, Audrey and Kimberly, and thanks everyone for your questions before, before we head out into the breakouts. Um, we have put a link in the chat for the session survey, uh, which uh, let's say you, you you are going to see over there is a survey monkey uh, survey. So I, I, I would like uh, really uh, all of you that are participating in the session today to complete this uh, so we gather your feedback and ideas uh, for, for next uh, sessions uh, as well. So say good things, say also opportunities for improvement. We are looking for everything, everything that you, you can provide us uh, as feedbacks uh, for us. Well, now, have you heard lots from the three of us? It's time for you to share your own experiences and we move to the break breakout rooms where we would like you to do the following. So quickly introduce yourself with just your name and where you work. Then share the best thing you have experienced uh, through your activities in ERGs or success ERGs uh, have helped your company achieve. And share a challenge you think ERGs face. Uh, some of uh, us are probably going to participate on some of these uh, breakout rooms uh, as well. And uh, But anyway, these are informal conversations and uh, they are not uh, being recorded you will get a prompt to enter a room. So you just need to click OK on that. And said that, have great conversations. Hope you had uh, nice conversations. Uh, I did. 
honestly. I was really happy in the group that I was uh, in. Uh, feel free to share a key takeaway with the rest of us uh, in, in the chat uh, as well. Um, and once again, uh, remember to fill uh, in the survey that I mentioned before, the survey monkey, uh, so that we can get uh, you know feedback uh, from from you. Uh, we we are always looking forward to to improve uh, ourselves. Um, learn now about the Society of Women Engineers uh, on our in Europe on our dedicated website and follow us on LinkedIn. So um, Com has uh, well, you, you will see that share it uh, in the in the chat uh, here as well. And uh, make sure you save the data ready for the We Local in Munich. So this year we had in Barcelona, here in Spain, and next year we are going to have that uh, in Germany on the 25 and 26 of April. 2024. Thank you very much for your time. 